In this video, I've got my hands on the brand new Blackmagic A10 Mini, and I'll be showing you what it can do and how you can use it to create professional multicam live streams in a matter of minutes. The A10 Mini is Blackmagic's latest offering to their production switcher range, and it's really aimed at those looking to get started with multicam productions and live streaming. Don't be fooled by the size though. This thing might look small, but it is packed full of technology. So what do you get? The A10 Mini has four HDMI inputs on the back, and these can accept up to 1080p 60. You can also mix and match inputs, and they will automatically resync. So that means you could plug a games console into HDMI 1, outputting 1080p 60, and then into HDMI 2, you could put a camera that is outputting 1080p 30, and the Blackmagic A10 Mini would see both just fine. You also have two 3.5 mm stereo mini jacks for microphone input. These can be set to either mic or line input, and you have access to Blackmagic's Fairlight audio mixer in the ATEM software control to really get the most out of audio when using the ATEM mini. It's also worth noting that you can use any of the four HDMI inputs to bring in audio to the ATEM mini, and I'll show you how to enable that and some more audio settings later on in this video. Moving along to your outputs. Now, firstly, on the back of here, you have an HDMI out, and I like to see it more of an aux out because it's not just going to force you to take a program feed out from the HDMI, but it's actually a selectable output. And I'll show you what controls you have and what things you can select for the HDMI out a little later on in this video. Secondly, and arguably most importantly, is the USB-C port on the back of the A10 Mini. Blackmagic have labeled it as a webcam output, and that's because when you connect the A10 Mini up to your computer via USB, and yes, it can be a USB-C to USB type A cable, uh, just make sure it's USB 3 and not USB 2. You don't have to scramble around for a Thunderbolt 3 cable or anything like that. But once you connect everything up, not only will you be able to control the A10 Mini via the software, but your computer will actually detect it as a webcam input. And that means via one cable, you can bring in your full 1080p60 output into your computer for recording, streaming, or even into applications like Skype or FaceTime. So it makes the whole thing truly plug and play. And I've got to say from all of my testing, it just works. And then finally, to finish off what we have on the back here of the A10 Mini, you have an ethernet port if you want to control the A10 Mini via the ethernet or hook it up to a network. And then of course you have a power input as well. Kudos to Blackmagic for making sure it's a locking connector so it's not gonna get yanked out when someone eventually does trip over the cable. So that's what you get on the back of the A10 Mini. I will go through the front in just a second, but for now, let's plug it in, jump into the software, and I'll show you how to set it up. When you first connect up the A10 Mini like I've done here, you'll need to download the latest software. So head to Blackmagic's website, hit support, Click ATEM Live Production Switchers and then download and install the most recent ATEM Switcher update. Very quick disclaimer here, I'm actually using a pre-production model of the Blackmagic A10 Mini with beta software that Blackmagic have very kindly provided me for this video. And what that means is by the time that you're watching this right now, there would have been many software updates. And so some of the settings that you see might be slightly different or in a different location, but everything should still make sense. The first thing you're going to want to do is launch the ATEM setup application. If we go into the About tab first, you can set your device's name here and also check what software version the ATEM Mini is running. In the Configure tab, there's some key options to set up here too. If you want to connect your ATEM Mini to a network via Ethernet for control, you can set up the network details in this top section here. Then if we move down to the panel settings, you can first set your switching mode. So if you want to be able to preview the shot before taking it to air, you can select preview program. Or if you like living on the risky side and just want to smash the input buttons for the ATEM to cut to that shot as soon as you hit it, then cut bus is for you. Now the picture in picture Kia and the chroma Kia settings here are pretty much the same. So you can either set them to drop with transition, and that means when the picture in picture and Kia is turned on for one shot and you transition to a different shot, it will turn off the picture in picture or the Kia when you transition. Or if you want them to stay on no matter what shot you go to, you can select stay with transition. Once you've made your settings, hit save, and we can head over to the ATEM software control to set up a few more things. 
When you launch the software control, you should see a virtual version of your A10 Mini. Any button presses you make on the physical A10 Mini will reflect here in the software version and vice versa. If you click the settings icon in the bottom left, on the general tab, there's only one option you can change here, and that is the video standard. You're going to set this to the video resolution and frame rate you want your end output to be. All of your inputs will then be rescaled to these settings. On the audio tab, you have the option to split the audio channels into separate mono channels so you can control each input's left and right channel individually. You can also select whether you want the audio follows video feature to be a hard audio cut when you switch the cameras or for there to be a softer fade. And finally, you can select mic or line level for both the 3.5mm stereo mini jack inputs on the back. The Labels tab allows you to rename your inputs and outputs, and this will be reflected on the buttons of the ATEM software control panel. For this video, we don't need to worry about the Hyperdex tab. I'll cover that when we talk about advanced setup in a later video. And the Remote tab, there's no options here for when using the ATEM Mini, so we don't have to worry about that either. Now, there is one final setting I want to show you, and that is the HDMI output. At the top of the ATEM software control, you'll see a menu option called Output. And if you click that, you'll see you can feed the HDMI output with your cameras one to four, the preview for previewing your shot before cutting it to air, or the program. There is one other option called Camera One Direct. This is a direct output from HDMI One, and it bypasses all of the internal processing that's going on on the ATEM Mini. And so for that reason, it makes it perfect for gamers because what you can do is you can plug in your games console into HDMI 1, select Camera 1 Direct as the HDMI output source, and then you can plug in your monitor. And what it will do is it will give you a low latency feed. And so when you're gaming and looking at your monitor, you won't get any of that annoying lag that you see with some other capture cards. It's a really great feature that Blackmagic have built into this. And that's pretty much all of the basic settings done. Now, as we're in the main console, let me explain what you've got here. Page one is the switcher view. It's a virtual representation of your A10 mini switcher. You'll notice there are a few more buttons and options on here that aren't on the physical switcher itself, and we'll cover what everything does later on in this series. Then if you move on to page two, you have media. This is where you can save and store all of your still media and graphics. The A10 Mini has one media player and 20 media slots, so you can store up to 20 stills in here and then drag the one you need into the media player when you need it. And finally, the audio page. Now this is where you have access to all of your audio levels and can select what inputs you want on or off or turn to audio follows video. You can also adjust input gain, levels and pan for each input as well as a master level control too. It's worth mentioning here, you also have volume controls for all inputs on the A10 Mini itself, and these will increase or decrease the levels by plus 3 dB each time you press. This page is also where you'll have access to the Fairlight Audio Mixer, but we'll cover that in a later video about advanced setup. If we head back to the switcher view, let's talk through how to use the A10 Mini. On the top left, you can see your program bar with all of the sources available to you. Any source you select here will be instantly cut to your live program, and you know it's on program because it will be illuminated red. With the A10 Mini, you have four camera feeds, black, color one, color two, color bars, and media player one. You have exactly the same layout underneath for your preview, and any source you select here will go to your preview, and then you'll need to press the cut or auto button to bring it to air. Depending on whether you set up your A10 Mini earlier to be in either cut bus mode or program preview mode, will determine whether when you press a physical source button on the A10 Mini, it goes into a preview screen or gets taken straight on air. We'll cover transitions, keyers, picture in picture mode later on in this series, so make sure you check out the videos for that. But for now, the only other things you need to know are the fade to black button and the audio controls on the A10 Mini itself. On the top of the device, you have on off and level controls for each mic input. And you have the same for each HDMI inputs audio too. You can also set each of these to be audio follows video rather than on, meaning that audio from the source will only be enabled when it's cut to air. So those are pretty much all the basics that you need to know about how to use the A10 Mini and a brief description about the buttons on the unit itself too. I will do a full video with advanced setup and features 
coming to this channel very soon, so watch out for that. But I wanna finish off showing you how easy it is to live stream with this device. So let's go live on YouTube. I've attached another camera here so that we can flip between multiple angles and I can show you some of the features of the A10 mini while we're live on YouTube. And I've gone over here and logged into my YouTube account. So the only other thing that I really need to do is head up here to this button where it says create a video or post. I'm gonna click on that and then I'm gonna hit go live. Now, because as we mentioned before, the A10 mini is seen as a webcam input on your computer, it means you don't have to worry about any third party streaming applications like OBS or Wirecast. You don't have to worry about any stream keys or URLs. With sites like YouTube and Facebook Live, they all allow you to use a webcam as an input. So that's all we do. We just hit webcam up here, give our broadcast a title. So I'm gonna put A10 mini test broadcast. Uh, I'm going to set it to private so that this one's just for us. And then I'm going to hit the more options button to enable us to choose which webcam I use. I've got a few plugged in here uh, if I was using my one up here, but I want to use the A10 mini for video. And then I can choose a microphone as well. So if I wanted to use the Rode microphone, I could, but in this case, I'm going to select Blackmagic Design as that is what the A ATEM uh, chooses for a name for its audio, or at least right now it does for me on this beta version. So I'll click both of those. There's no advanced settings that I really need. So I'm going to click next and it's going to ask me to set a thumbnail. So you have to do a, I don't know, a pose. That was awkward. Um, and that is pretty much it. That is, all we needed to do, we just have to hit go live now, which I'm gonna do. It will do its preparation checks and then tell you it's going live. And then once it, we are live, we'll get a notification saying you are live. And it really couldn't be more simple than that. We are right now live on YouTube using the A10 mini. And uh, as you can see here, if I wanted to, we could cut to different ca camera angles. So we've got the angle here uh, using the GoPro of the A10 mini broadcast panel itself. We can cut we can mix and fade. We can use some of the transitions here. And we can even do picture in picture. So you can see both cameras at the same time. So it allows you to create a really powerful broadcast in such a tiny box. Pipe it all at full 1080p, 60 frames per second or up to that. that. You can do it at lower resolutions as well if you want and frame rates. Pipe it all to your computer via one cable and you just saw how easy it was to go live to sites like YouTube and Facebook. It really couldn't be simpler. Uh, so those are the very basics in this video that I've covered, the basics of what the A10 mini is, how to use it and set it up, and then just now how to live stream with it. But I'll be doing multiple videos as well across the channel in the next coming weeks with more advanced setups because I really want to push this thing to its absolute limit. So again, thanks for Blackmagic for sending this to me to test out and create this video. More videos to come. If you enjoyed this one and you found it useful, please do give it a like. And uh, also if you know people who are in the tech world and would find this interesting, please do share it with them. Make sure you subscribe for more and I'll be back with another Blackmagic A10 mini video very soon. Thanks for watching.